Hello everyone, my name is Dongup Kwon and I'm from Seoul National University. In this talk, I will present FPGA assisted virtual device simulation for storage virtualization. This work was done with my fellow students and my advisor, Professor Jang Woo Kim. We also collaborated with Memory Solutions Lab at Samsung Semiconductor. Let me start by giving you some background information. An NVMe storage device provides high I.O. performance through PCI Express bus. Unlike other conventional storage devices, NVMe brings multiple deep I.O. queues, and it enables parallel processing on multiple CPU cores. Since it has performance benefits, NVMe devices are widely used in modern data centers to accelerate data-intensive workloads. And one way to virtualize NVMe devices is utilizing hardware-assisted virtualization mechanisms. For example, an SRV-capable device virtualizes itself, and it creates multiple physical and virtual functions. Its virtual machine then has direct access to those virtual functions. To isolate device resource usage, NVMe allows its virtual functions to get exclusive use of device resources. For example, its virtual function can be configured to exclusively use virtual queues, virtual interrupt, and the different namespace. And SRV can provide near-native NVMe performance to multiple virtual machines while bypassing the host software. However, SRIOV has limited VM management features and it can support only single device use cases. As this table shows, SRIOV does not support important features to enable easy storage management, such as live migration and aggregation. Also, it does not allow hypervisors to add features that are not natively provided by physical devices, such as replication and throttling. In addition, such vendor specific hardware schemes can significantly limit the portability in large scale data centers. So, to provide highly flexible VM management at minimal virtualization overhead, side core mechanisms are now considered as a highly promising solution. I will introduce two existing side core solutions. First, most side core approaches can speed up storage virtualization by avoiding expensive traps to the hypervisor and reducing cache pollution. The dedicated side cores for guest I operations through shared memory region. So there is no need to call VM exits to submit NVMe commands. Moreover, its usual level NVMe device driver enables side cores to conduct I operations without user kernel mode switches. They also reduce the number of data copies by allocating guest DMA buffers in a pinned shared memory region. And the NVMe devices can transfer data directly to the guest memory space. However, to get high storage performance, they demand up to 60% more CPU resources than native IO operations. There are two main reasons of such high CPU resource usage. First, the side core approaches should allocate many CPU cores to take full advantage of multiple NVMe queues. Second, the software implementation triggers virtual interrupt through system calls and VM exits. Therefore, to support many NVMe devices and guarantee the quality of a service at the same time, the current host side core approaches will demand a huge portion of host CPUs for storage virtualization. Eventually, the virtual machines will have serious performance and scalability problems due to the lack of computing resources. To save the host resources required for storage virtualization, a recent study of loaded the virtualization layer to system on chip cores in other peripheral devices. The SOC implementation allows the runtime software to access virtual NVMe queue pairs mapped in the host machine memory through DMA. In addition, it allocates the physical NVMe queue pairs in the SOC memory space 
and provides their locations to physical and VME devices to make it interact with the SOC course directly. Since they utilize on device aside the course to emulate virtual storage devices, it can save the host CPU resources and offer more compute power to virtual machines. However, their IO performance can be severely bounded by SOC core's weak computing power. Our data show that even with eight SOC cores, their weak computing capability become the performance bottleneck. In addition, SOC side core designs cannot support a large number of virtual and physical devices due to their limited computing capabilities. These scalability issues will become more serious as storage devices get faster in the future. So we set the following design goals to resolve the challenges in modern storage virtualization. First, a next generation virtualization mechanism should offer the near native performance of NVMe storage devices. Second, it should minimize the amount of host resource usage so that a host machine can provide more computing power to virtual machines. Third, at the same time, it should scale with the number of backend storage devices. Also, it should not rely on hardwired and vendor specific units to implement flexible and compatible VM management. Then, let's move on our key ideas and implementation details. In this work, we designed and implemented FVM, which is a new hardware assisted storage virtualization mechanism. It achieves high performance and scalability while maintaining the flexibility to support the various VM management features. The key idea of FVM is implementing a storage virtualization layer on an FVJ board or FVM engine, which is decoupled from the host resources. And it enables hardware-based device control mechanism to make the card manage the physical devices directly. FVM also utilizes high-level synthesis techniques to provide easy programmability for VM management features. Our solution can also be implemented on ASICs for higher performance, but in that case, the ASIC implementation loses future flexibility for new VM management features. The first key idea is a hardware-level virtualization layer. FVM assigns virtual FVM engine instances to each virtual machine through the SRIV interface. There are three major benefits of providing SRIV in FVM engine. First, this design enables the host efficient virtual device emulation. Virtual machines can directly enter this hardware interposition layer without host software intervention. Second, it allows the multiple virtual machines to share backend storage devices. Using this interposition layer, FVM engine can map virtual devices onto a much smaller set of physical devices. Third, it does not rely on fixed or vendor specific storage capabilities. By simply deploying FVM engine, any host machine can benefit from our virtualization mechanism. Second, FVM achieves high scalability by executing virtualization on FVM engine. Our FVM engine implementation has two parts. First, the front-end implementation includes FVM cores, which emulates virtual devices by interacting with virtual machines. Second, the back-end implementation has many NVMe interfaces to directly manage the physical NVMe devices. So, it can maximize the VM scalability by instantiating many front-end resources. Similarly, FVM also scales with the target backend storage system by instantiating many NVMe interfaces. This design choice can offer more scalable performance than on-device SOC cores as it replaces the fixed number of general purpose side cores with their large number of customized hardware units. Third, backend NVMe interfaces allow FVM engine to directly manage the physical devices through PCI peer-to-peer -peer communications. At the installation time, host software remaps physical NVMe queues on FVM engine's memory region and delivers their addresses to the physical NVMe devices. Then, 
the NVMe device can fetch the NVMe commands from FVM engine through the PCIe switch. Similarly, after the NVMe device processes the submitted commands, it writes the command completion entries to FVM engine's memory region. First, FVM enables flexible and easily programmable implementations through its high-level synthesis design flow. In this work, we implemented five different storage functions, device sharing, throttling, replication, caching, and direct copy. To implement these example functions, we added and modified only tens of or hundreds of high-level ranges code on the baseline FVM implementation. Now, I will explain the end-to-end -end IO pass. This figure shows the end-to-end -end submission pass. First, when the guest OS submit an IO request, the guest FVM engine driver intercepts it and writes the submission tail pointer to FVM engine. In this way, the guest OS can indicate the new NVMe commands to be executed. The FVM cores then pull the doorbell registers and process the guest IO operations at the hardware layer. At step four, the FVM cores access the submission queue in the guest memory space and read the submitted commands through the DMA engine. After that, the FVM cores manipulate the received NVMe commands and forwards them to the back end. The back end implementation moves the NVMe commands to the submission queue in the FVM engine's on chip memory. At step seven, the back end NVMe interface rings the doorbell register located in the NVMe devices to notify the number of newly submitted commands. Then, the NVMe device fetches the NVMe command through PCIe peer-to-peer -peer communications and processes the commands. The next figure shows the end-to-end -end IO completion pass. The completion pass starts from the NVMe device at step one. And at step two, the NVMe interface in FVM engine handles completions from physical NVMe devices by pulling its completion queue regions. After that, the NVMe interface forwards the received completion entries to the front end. At step five, the FVM cores look up the matched guest IO request and writes the completion messages to the guest completion queue. At the same time, they inject an interrupt to the guest directly. The FVM engine driver then forwards the interrupt with the associative interrupt vectors to the NVMe device driver and allows it to handle the received completion messages. At step eight, to notice that the command completions are successfully handled, FVM engine driver intercepts doorbell light request and writes the received CQ head pointer to the target addresses in FVM engine doorbell region. To evaluate FVM's flexibility, we implemented five example storage functions in FVM's hardware level virtualization layer. This slide illustrated the throttling feature. In this work, we implemented a token-based throttling algorithm on FVM engine. This feature can limit the bandwidth with periodically defeated tokens and a token bucket in every FVM core. With this feature, on FVM core pulls the refill token signal and filters every command by checking the size of a request and the amount of remaining tokens. If the command is issued, the corresponding amount of tokens are removed from the bucket. Second, FVM can enable direct device to device or D2D data copy while bypassing the host CPU and memory. Using this feature, a server with the FVM engine can perform intra VM or inter VM data transfers efficiently. When FVM engine receives the request, it splits the bulk data transfer into multiple smaller sized requests. After that, it generates the NVMe commands for each request and submitted them using FVM engine's NVMe interface. To bypass the host memory, the NVMe commands use the FPGA's on chip memory as an intermediate data buffer. To evaluate the FVM, we built a prototype on a host machine with the five Intel Optane NVMe SSDs. And we implemented FVM engine on a Xilinx data center accelerator card using Vivado and Vivado HLS tools. We connected the FVJ card with other NVMe SSDs through PCIe. On the software side, we modified the on SBDK VOS NVMe implementation 
and apply that VM to an existing KVM virtualization system. Let's move on to our experimental results. To evaluate that VM, we ran FIO random IO benchmarks and RocksDB workload on VMs. And we evaluate our FVM implementation against the native execution and existing virtualization mechanisms, including host side cores and path through. Since the path through avoids most of the virtualization software stacks and directly assigns the devices to the virtual machine, it can provide the ideal execution performance, but it loses the flexibility to support the VM management features. First, we ran FIO with two SSDs and measured the maximum achievable throughput. For pass-through and FVM, we allocated four CPU cores and one gigabyte system memory for a virtual machine. For host side core, we allocated one CPU core for the side core of storage virtualization and three cores for the virtual CPUs. Our data showed that the relative throughput of four kilobyte random read write and mixed in read and write benchmarks. For R3 random IO benchmarks, pass-through and FVM can achieve about 79% of native performance. However, host side core achieves about 58% due to the CPU resource contention between virtual machines and the virtualization side core. To evaluate the server workload on FVM, we ran RocksDB and YCSB to generate the workload. For host side core, we considered the various CPU of location scenarios and increased the portion of dedicated side cores up to 50% to emulate the future high performance and VME devices. For this purpose, we signed from one to four CPU cores out of four or eight for side cores and assigned the remaining CPU cores for the virtual machine. Our data show that the speed up of FVM compared to the host side core implementation. Since FVM saves host CPU resources to provide more computing power to virtual machines, FVM obtains up to 70% higher throughput than the host side core approaches. With this result, we can say FVM will become more promising as the storage devices get faster in the future. Next, we measure the total achievable throughput with an increasing number of virtual machines. The research showed that FVM scales well as the number of virtual machines increases. With the four virtual machines and SSDs, FVM achieves up to 9.5 gigabyte per second. However, host side core fails to achieve the full performance due to software overhead. And this graph shows the CPU usage, host memory bandwidth, and PCI root complex bandwidth usage while performing 32 gigabyte inter SSD data copy. Our data show that the data transfer through FVM engine provides high bandwidth without consuming the host resources. We also discussed the cost analysis in the paper. FVM can be used for cost saving as it minimizes the number of required CPUs and servers for the target storage virtualization system. And we can implement the FVM on a more cost effective FPGA board as our FVM cores use very small FPGA resources. And let me conclude my talk. In this work, we present FVM, a new hardware-assisted storage virtualization mechanism. The key idea is implementing a storage virtualization layer on an FPGA card, which is decoupled from the host resources. A server equipped with FVM engine achieves high performance, scalability, and flexibility in a modern storage virtualization stack. Thank you for watching our presentation.